Hi, and welcome to part two of Kirchhoff's Laws. Let's review what we already know. The two laws are, one is I in equals I out. So if you remember, what that means is that the current flowing into a junction equals the current out of a junction. So this current, if this was flowing this way, this flowing this way, this current flowing that way would have to equal the sum of these two. Now, second law is that the change in voltage over a loop equals zero. So if you remember, this is abiding by the law of conservation of energy. And what this means is that if you take any loop, say you start at this point right here, and you take a loop all the way around here and up and back, you'll always end up with a change in voltage of zero. So, we learned in part one where these laws came from. Now, we're going to learn how to apply them. So, as we learned in part one, the general application of these two laws is by creating a system of equations for a circuit using both I n equals I out, say I1 plus I2 equals I3, as well as using the loop rule and using the equation V equals IR to find different changes in voltages. However, this circuit, it would be quite complicated to do all that. For instance, since there are so many junctions, we have numerous, uh, we'd have numerous times to apply I n equals I out, and because there are so many resistors, so many batteries, the system of equations would be enormous. So, I'm going to show you a little shortcut to be able to solve for I through this resistor. And remember, this will only be able to be used in some situations, however, it can simplify your life enormously for problems such as this. So, since we don't want to solve for every single current, we only want to solve for the current in this particular resistor. In order to do that, we need to find a loop in which this current is the only unknown. So, after looking at this for a little bit, you'll see there are a lot of paths that aren't going to work. Say, we can start right here and go up and around and through and then end up back here and we have a loop. However, that's not going to work because we don't know the current through this resistor and we won't be able to figure out, uh, we won't be able to figure out all the different currents because of all the different chain, of all the different junctions in between. However, there is one loop that will suffice. So let's start on this side. Over here, let's put our beginning of our loop right here, right before this battery. Now, let's travel up, down here. So right now, we've gone through two batteries. If we do the loop rule, we know that these two things will be, it'll start with changing V for the loop equals, since we went from the negative to the positive, we're going plus 5 volts plus another 5 volt. Then we go across and through another battery, and then this is positive to negative, so that's going to be minus 5 volts. And then, again, we can't go through any other resistors, because if we go through any other resistors, we have to deal with another current that we don't know. So, we'll go up to this battery. That's another 5 volts. And down, and now we go through our target resistor, the one that we want to figure out the current for. And then, across across, and up. So, if we complete our loop with all the different equations, it's going to be, we have 5 volts, 5 volts, minus 5 volts, another 5, and then we have minus I, R, and we know that R is 10 ohms, as we've stated for the problem, plus 5 more volts, plus 5 more volts. Now, we have the change of voltage of the loop, and we can set that to zero, as Kirchhoff's law states. So zero equals, and we can simplify this, to 5, 10, minus 5, so it's 5, 10, 
15, 20. So we have 0 equals 20 minus i times 10. If 10 is the resistance of this resistor. So as we can see, it's pretty simple to solve from here that IR, or 10i equals 20, and I equals 2 amps. Now we're going to unlock the true power Kirchhoff's law. So, in the last example, we saw how we could solve for a current through one particular resistor. Now, we're going to see how we can solve for an entire circuit. We can figure out current through every part of the circuit, and thus we can solve for total resistance or anything else we need to solve for. We'll have all the information we can using Kirchhoff's law. So, as we mentioned, the best way to do this is by creating a system of equations using junctions, using I and I out, and the loop rule. So first we're going to do junctions, but to start we need to label all the different currents. So we're going to start with current I1, which is going to go through this resistor. It's going to go I2, going the other way. I3, which we don't really know which direction it's going to go, so we're just going to guess. And we need to just stay consistent. Even if we realize that it's wrong, it doesn't matter. So we're going to stay consistent, and if we pick the wrong way, then all that's going to happen is we're going to end up with a negative current in our final solution, and we'll know that we picked the wrong way. But it'll still have the right magnitude. So we're just going to guess that it's going down. We don't know. So we're going to call that I3. Then we have I4 up here, and I5. And we don't need to use the big I, which would be the one going through the battery, because we know that's just going to equal I1, I2, and it doesn't go through a resistor. So we don't need to worry ourselves with that. So now it's time for some solving. It's time for setting up some equations. The first equation we're going to set up is that we know, let's do this junction to start. So I1 goes in and I4 and I3 go out. Therefore, we can set up the equation which is I1 equals I3 plus I4. Now, we can do this junction right here. That we know I2 and I3 are going in and I5 is coming out. Therefore, we can do I2 plus I3 equals I5. Now, now we can start using the loop rule. So we have these two junctions, and now it's time to find some loops that we can use. So our first loop we're going to use is this right around this circle. So we start, say, right here, and we go through I1, and we're going with the current. Therefore, it's going to be minus. So we have 0 equals negative 2 I1. So you have B equals IR. Then minus 2 I3. And plus 3 I2. So that's one loop. Now, we can do another loop, which is I4, I5, and I3. So, we have, we can start right here, and we'll go around this way. So we have minus 2, I4, we have 0 equals negative 2, I4, plus I5, plus 2i3. Now, we have five variables, so that means we need one more equation. Because you always need the right, you always need an equal number of equations as you do variables. And our variables are all the different currents. So since we have five of them, we need one more equation. This equation is going to come using the battery. So we're going to do a loop starting right behind the battery. 
is we're going to travel through the battery, then through I1 and I4, and back around. So this is going to be 0 equals 12 minus 2I1 minus 2I4. So now we have our five equations. However, it's time to solve these equations. And the best way to do that is by putting them into a matrix. So over here, we have our matrix. This has our five variables plus a constant on top. And these will be the spaces for our five equations. So in order to put all of these uh, equations into the matrix, what we need to do is we need to get them into a form where it's variables plus other variables equal a constant. So this first equation, it's I1 equals I3 plus I4. However, we can change that into 0, so 0 will go in our constant spot, equals I3 plus I4 minus I1. And so for each of these spots in the matrix, what we're going to put is we're going to put the coefficient attached to each variable. So if it's I3 plus I4, it's going to be a 1 for I3, a 1 for I4, and minus I1, that's minus 1, and then I2 and I5 are not involved, so there's a 0 for each of them. Now we're going to rewrite each of these other equations in the same manner. So we have I2 plus I3 equals I5, and that can be rewritten as I2 plus I3 minus I5 equals 0. So a 0 for I1, a 1 for I2, a 1 for I3, a 0 for I4, negative 1, and 0. Now, our third equation is already in the correct form, but now we need to remember to add coefficients. So we have negative 2, I1, 0, sorry, plus 3, I2, minus 2, I3, and I4 and I5 aren't involved, and these three together equal 0. Now, we have 0 equals, so let's put 0 for equation 4, equals negative 2, I4, plus I5, plus 1, I5, plus 2, I3, and I1 and I2 aren't involved. Now, our last one, we need to rearrange a little bit. And the best way to rearrange it is try to make everything positive, just to keep it simple. It won't make a difference, but so let's have 12. Let's put the two variables on the other side, so it ends up as 12 equals 2i1 plus 2i4. So our constant is 12 equals 2i1, 0i2, plus 0i3, plus 2i4, plus 0i5. So now we have our 5 by 6 matrix. What you can do is you can solve this matrix by hand. This would require a, uh, the use of Gaussian elimination. It's a very complicated process. However, luckily, your calculator is able to do this matrix and solve this out very simply. So now we have our finished matrix, and there are two ways to solve this, one of which is by hand using Gaussian elimination. And that would be a pretty long process and it can be done. You can use that and apply that to this matrix. However, we're going to go with the little simpler tactic of plugging it into a calculator. So, in order to plug this into the calculator, what you'll do is you will plug in each of these values in a 5 by 6 matrix, and then you'll perform the function rref, or reduced row echelon form, which will put it into a form where you can see what each of the variables equals. So, over here, we have what the final version will look like after you've performed reduced row echelon form. So what this means is these are still equations. These, it puts it into a form where you're having five separate new equations by simplifying and reducing the old matrix. However, these equations are, this first equation can be rewritten as I1 plus 0, I2, plus 0, etc., etc., equals 3.4. Therefore, we know I1 equals 3.4. And we can continue for the rest. 
So we know I2 equals 2.8, we know I3 equals 0 0.8, I4 equals 2.6, and I5 equals 3.6. And all of these, of course, are in amperes. So now that we know this, we've solved essentially the entire circuit. 